Welcome to Carleton's Math Corner. Today we're going to continue our study on solving algebraic equations with adding and subtracting. So our target today is I can solve subtraction equations using inverse operations. Remember in our last video we talked about what an inverse operation is. Remember it's an opposite operation. And so like in this problem, this is an example again of an equation. Say so it's a balancing scale. Basically, we're trying to keep the left side equal to the right side. And so I'm trying to figure out what the missing number is. Some number minus 6 is the same as 2. And if you thought 8, 8 minus 6 is 2. What did you do with the numbers 6 and 2 so that you can get to the answer of 8? Exactly, if I take 6 plus 2, that would give me the answer of 8. And so what you basically did is you used the addition property of equality. It means if you add a number from you know both sides, then the sides will remain the same. They'll remain equal. So the inverse operation is, sub is subtraction, or of subtraction is addition. And so... If I write um, addition and I add 6 to get rid of this 6, then on this side I have to do the same thing because if I don't, then I am going to get an unbalanced equation. So if I add 6 here, I have 2 plus 6, and that's where my 8 came from. How about this problem? 17 is the same as some number minus 2. And this is basically the algebra way of writing it. 17 is equal to a variable minus 2. And what is that missing number? Exactly, 19. 19 minus 2 is the same as 17. And the way that we got that is if this is, you, if we're using the inverse, the opposite of, it, of subtraction, it's addition. And so we put, we add to, we're always adding the number that the subtraction sign is on. And if I do it on that side, I need to also do it on this side. And so I'm going to add two on this side as well. So 17 plus two, that's where my equation came from, or that's where my answer came from of 19. So let's do another problem. What if I have a problem that doesn't have whole numbers, it has decimals in it? I have n minus 11.6 is equal to 18.9. Well, again, I'm going to use the opposite or the inverse operation. And so the opposite would be addition. And so I am going to add the number that is next to that subtraction sign, which is 11.6. So I'm going to add on this side, and I'm going to add on the other side. And I want you to see that there are two sides. If I draw a line down, and I call these again railroad tracks, I want you to see that they, there, are, there is a left side and a right side to this equation. And so if I am adding 6 on this side, I need to also add 6 on the other or not 6, 11.6. I need to add 11.6 on this side as well. Now notice I'm lining up the decimal points because when you add or subtract decimals, we need to make sure we're lining up that de those decimal points. And then all we do is we basically just add as normal. We take 9 plus 6, which is 15, and we carry, we put the 5 down here and put the 1 on top. And 1 plus 8 plus 1 is 10. So I put a 0 down here. And I carry the 1 on top. And I don't know why it is stuck on underlining. But I want to get rid of all those. Um, and then 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. And I'll rewrite this. So we have... 30, and we're going to drop down the decimal point where it was. And so let me get rid of this underlining first. And so we have 30, 
And if we drop down the decimal point, basically, it will go right in front of that 5 or right after the 0. And so my answer is 30.5. So our answer for n is equal to 30.5. Let's look at another one. We have 2.3 is equal to n minus 6.7. Remember, we're doing the opposite operation, so, or the inverse operation. And so what is the inverse operation of minus or of subtraction? Addition. So we are going to take, whoops, let's move it out of the way if it's not going to work. Um, and I'm going to show just with my railroad tracks, the left side from the right side. So I have subtraction over here, so opposite is addition. So we're going to do plus 6.7. And I'm going to do plus 6.7 on the other side because I need to keep them balanced, the equation balance. And I'm going to line up the decimal points. So I have 2.3 plus 6.7. And so I get 9.0. So n is 9.0. And I can check these solutions. I can take, you know, 30.5 and I could plug it in for n. And if I take 30.5 minus 11.6, I should get an answer that, so let's do that, let's do a six, oops, not six, 30 point, 30 point, 0 0.5, or 0.5, minus 11.6, and I get 18.9, and that's my original number, so the solution works. How about below, let's put our answer of 9.0, or just 9, in for n right here. So it would be 9 minus 6.7, that should equal 2.3, and it does. Okay, so let's look at some problems that have fractions in them. And so here's a couple problems. This one says n minus 5 6 equals 4 6. So remember the opposite of subtraction or the inverse is addition. So if I set it up, I can take and add 5 6 to both sides and I'm going to show both sides just by putting some railroad tracks down. And so on the left side I put plus 5 6 and on the right side I put plus 5 6. And because they both have a common denominator, I can just add the numerators together. 4 plus 5 is 9, so I get 9 sixths. And that is the same as 1 and 3 sixths, because 6 goes into 9 once and there's 3 left over. Now I can't leave this as 3 over 6 because that is not simplified, so I'm going to simplify it to 1 half. So my answer then is 1 and 1 half. Now let's look at this next one. So we have 2 fifths is equal to something minus 4 sevenths. Again, I'm going to do the opposite operation. And so I am going to, instead of subtract, I'm going to add. And I'm going to bring down my bars, um, my railroad tracks, so I can see that I'm doing it on both sides. Remember, this side will be equal 0 because they're opposites of each other. This side is where I'm going to add, and notice they both have uncommon denominators, so I need to make them common first. So if I look at this, between 5 and 7, so I'm going to write them over here, 2 fifths plus 4 sevenths. A common denominator between 5 and 7 is 35, and so I am going to ask myself 5 times what is 35? Well, 7. So I'm going to do 2 times 7 is 14. So I'm going to kind of fix it, fix these fractions, like fix it Felix. And then I'm going to do 7 times what is 35? 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. Now I've made my denominators the same. Now I can just add the numerators. 14 plus 20 is 34. And so my answer is 34 35ths. And there's nothing to simplify. 
And I can even, I can take my fractions and I can plug them in. And I can check to see if my answer works. And so 34 35ths minus 4 7 should be the same as 2 5 Okay, so um, if I take 34 35ths and I subtract um, 4 7 and 4 7 we found is the same as 20 35ths because look, 4 7 same as 20 35ths. So if I take this and I subtract is 34 35ths minus 20 35ths, I get 14 35ths. Isn't 14 35ths the same as 2 fifths? Yes, it is, because look, here's 2 fifths, here's 14 35ths. So they are the same. It actually does work. My solution works. And so I am done with that problem. Last time you did these two problems, and so what I would like you to do is to finish it up with this problem as a ticket problem. Thank you so much for joining me at Carlton's Math Corner, and I look forward to meeting with you again.